Das da bin ich, Colt Sievers. Und das ist meine Story. I, I want to thank you for this amazing movie. I, I loved it. I really fell in love with it. I'm going to try and watch it again tonight. But I also want to thank you for something even more important. Because I've been harassed and ridiculed about being the biggest Bon Jovi fan in Germany. <laughs> thank you for putting You Give Love a Bad Name into the trailer. I thought it was amazing. That was really cool. You're um, welcome. Uh, <laughs> Kelly, I would love to talk to you about, you know, producing this movie because you've done so many already with a lot of action in it. But in what way would you say has this one differed to all the others where, you know, stunts are so important in the way you tell the story, especially from as far as I know, you actually wanted to do a different kind of movie in the beginning and then Ryan jumped on it and put a love story in the focus as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I'm not an action junkie. I come from, I mean, he's my gateway to action, actually. And it is, for me, a vehicle to add melodrama to a character's arc. When you have a stunt performer as your underdog hero, you can do really awesome stunts <laughs> that also connect at different times. Um, the cannon roll at the beginning is the perfect way that he, you know, sort of isn't is a little rusty, you know. Even though he hits a world record, he hits some other things too, and that's a problem. And then he kind of gets his come up ins, and then as, as we go along, he's gaining his confidence back as a stunt performer, and he kind of just is starting to believe what he can do. That allows for you to do even bigger stunts. In this case. Behind the scenes, we were giving opportunity to stunt performers to make dream, dream making, dream come true type action um, every st stunt out. And that's really exciting as a producer to be able to give the opportunity to the stunt performers. David, I already told you at the Bullet Train premiere that I find it amazing how good you are, you know, merging your two passions together, directing okay. on one hand and the stunt work on the other. This one is about paying tribute to, you know, your colleagues all around the world. Mm -hmm. How difficult was it for you to pick the right stunts, you know, to, to make them shine, but mm -hmm. not to overdo it in a sense? Well, we felt, don't we felt the pressure, you know, I think with the, with the IP, the fall guy, the stunt community's eyes were going to be on this and then obviously that it's about a stunt performer but we wanted to just you know we really wanted to do some classics i think things that have gone away in the you know like the high fall is something that hasn't been around for a while because you know we use wire rigs and we do all other sophisticated things that are still stunt related but not the old school practical stunts and so we did a big car jump we did a cannon roll we did light people on fire we knew we had to have an authenticity and we knew we had to do them as practical as possible because this was a celebration of, you know, that generation of stunts. And um, we went back there and tried to deliver the best versions of those. And I think the stunt team really stepped up and obviously they had a world record, which is not easy to do. So, no, they are amazing. And yeah. you can you can sense it, you know, the fun that they probably had on set, yeah. um, you know, next to the story and the stunts. I mean, the most important bit of a movie, are most of the time, the stars. And I think Ryan and Emily are just Magic. perfect. <laughs> I mean, were, were they the first ones that you actually wanted to cast in the leading roles and why? They are, you know, we went to Ryan really early on with just a pitch and um, thank God he said yes, because I don't know what we would have done. <laughs> <laughs> He's a perfect um, partner. I don't. And, and also he's so collaborative and he's, David and he are really well matched in that like, they're always just trying to do better, more, 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 even just to the vowel, even just to the littlest thing. And, and it's this beautiful compression of just like wanting to, in this case, um, uh, make the audience happy. And I think he does that in spades. Um, he can do everything and anything in our movie. He's charismatic, he's vulnerable, he's a mess, he's a hot mess, <laughs> and he's so cool at the same time. It's just unreal that we have him. And Emily was just a blessing, I can't believe it. We had just changed the character over from a makeup artist to a first time director. It, she was reading that rough draft. I don't know how, but she saw through it and she decided to jump in and tailor the character to her and to what was needed for the movie. And it was just an absolute gift. Um, just amazing, they're so amazing. They're unbelievable. Are they great? I mean, yeah. they're, they're really great. Uh, David, I think sometimes working as a director is a, a lonesome job because you have to 
make a lot of decisions on your own because you have sort of a vision of creating a story. Mm -hmm. As a former stunt performer and still someone who's itching to do stunts, you need to work as a team. Do yeah. you think that makes you a different director in regards to creating the on-set, you know, kind of vibe? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. It does. I think I have a really unique experience of being a stunt performer, being in front of the camera, having to perform, and then being behind the camera as a stunt coordinator, as a department head, working with my with my colleagues in the art department and the hair department and the special effects and all the artisans that are working behind the scenes. So I've had to be in front and behind. And that's like 20 plus years of my life. And then to get the chance to direct with that wealth, that well of experience is really a blessing because a lot of directors don't have the understanding what you're asking your departments to do. And like, they're gonna lose sleep tonight, but I'm gonna ask them to do it. So asking them with love and understanding and like, and then knowing what to expect out of them and what they can deliver because you've been in the trenches, it's, it's really a gift. And it's, it does make me a different director and I think way more of a collaborator. Super collaborative. And he's also got this super cool on set because when he was a stunt performer that, and coming to set, he was potentially risking his life. <laughs> when he's directing, it's like nothing really hurts as bad, you know? He can kind of handle it all. It's pretty magical yeah. how he's Certainly how cool better he than is. falling downstairs. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the Fall Guys sequels. Uh, that's going to be exciting, hopefully. I mean, this story yes. needs to be, you know, told. I mean, yeah. there, there's so much to come. Uh, last question, because uh, I already spoke to Emily and Ryan about it. Another thing that I really loved is the karaoke scene. Um, <laughs> so what would be your uh, go-to karaoke song be if your life depended on it? If my life depended yeah. on it? Oh, then I... Wait, do we have to do it well? <laughs> no, no, no. See, that's what okay. karaoke is all about. Yeah. You don't it's have to sing more, around. It's more commitment. Well, I'm with you. I'm a Bon Jovi fan. So Wanted, Dead or Alive is my go-to karaoke song. I'll tell you about Taylor Swift. Come on, guys. <laughs> You're going to bring in your Taylor. Yeah. She's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's a heartbreak anthem, you guys. Yes, like, right. it's so emo. That's cool. <laughs> Thank you so much, David and Kelly. Ein letzter Stunt. Volles Programm mit Pauken und Trompeten. <laughs>